Uh, I have a friend who uh, is really gung-ho to get a husband, right? So she dates. Like, she dates like Rob Ford smokes crack, am I right? Okay. Um, I just dated the DVD, but... Uh, <laughs> It's worth it. So, uh, no, she's, she goes on a lot of dates and she has a lot of dating rules. You know, like um, she won't date a man who's in a band. Um, she won't date a man who has a roommate. She won't date a man who wears Tevas. Um, and that would make sense because, you know, Tevas say to me like, I'm in grade nine and I'm about to play hacky sack. So uh, I would avoid that too. But anyway, she has uh, one rule that I really don't understand. And it's that um, before she agrees to sleep with a man, she insists on asking him, how many other women have you had sex with? And based on his answer, she determines whether or not she will give it, okay? Um, and I think that's stupid because um, it's really none of your business. You're both adults. And if you're not, get a lawyer, okay? <laughs> um, you know, why do you do that? And she said, well, I think it's a really good way of rating someone's moral values by knowing <laughs> how many people they've had sex with, right? And uh, I just think that's dumb because I don't think the number of people that you've had sex with is a rating of whether or not you're a good person. You know, like, what if she asked a guy that, uh, uh, what if she asked a guy that question and he was, and she was like, okay, fuck. What if, because it's a taping, I'm gonna do this again. Are you guys with me? Are you still gonna <laughs> laugh? Okay. Um, I just don't think it's a number of people you've had sex with that determines whether or not you're a good person, right? Like, what if she's with a guy and she's like, um, Doug, um, before we do this, um, I just need to know how many other women have you had sex with? What if he's like, oh, just one. Really? But I raped her. <laughs> that kind of changes the game, right? Because, I mean, I'd rather a man make sweet, sweet love to like 1,000 women than destroy one vagina and spirit at that. Um, also, you know, I was afraid to ask like, what is too many? Because I was afraid she'd be like, oh, 10. I'd be like, uh-oh. Um, you know, but like, I'm in my mid to late 2030s. And um, I'd be more concerned that it was too few, you know? Like, what if I was with a guy in my age bracket and I was like, um, Doug, um, before we do this, I was just wondering how many other women have you had sex with? What if he was like, oh, just four? I'd be like, what the fuck, are you a loser? Get out of here! No wonder you're so bad at that. Um, <laughs> speaking of men I don't want to date, uh, I saw a homeless man the other day and uh, not trying to brag. And uh, no, he had a beard and well, of course he had a beard. He's homeless, where's he gonna shave? But uh, guys, it's jokes. Um, no, but he had a special beard. It was special because it was covered in vomit. Uh, it was just coated, okay? Like I actually was like impressed. Like I didn't understand how he got vomit to go on the side of his... Like it's like he went to Dairy Queen and he was like, can you dip this? Um, and they were like, yeah, sure, chocolate. And he was like, vomit. Uh, they were like, yeah, it's in the back. So it was unbelievable. But what I found really interesting about this man is that he was still panhandling. You know, he was still like, 25 cents for some change, you know, a little piece of vomit were flying everywhere. Um, he was still on the job, right? And uh, some of you were like, hey, that's not a job. Well, I think it is, okay? Um, because we actually pay people for a service when they are panhandling, okay? Because just that day, I was walking down the street and I was thinking to myself, I was like, oh man, I wish I had an iPhone 5. I hate this stupid iPhone 4, right? And then I saw vomit face and I was like, oh iPhone 4 is pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, here's a dollar, thank you. Uh, so that is a service. But yeah, he was still like, spur some change, you know? And I was like, dude, I don't know if that's good for business. Um, you know, like if I'm at work and I throw up on my face, uh, I take a five minute break, uh, clean that off. You could use a puddle, whatever. So uh, the other weird thing about the vomit is that it was all carrot. It was all mushed carrot and chunks of carrot. And I just couldn't, the whole day I was like, where the fuck did that guy get so many carrots? 
Do you know what I mean? Like, um, like I was thinking maybe he's addicted to carrots. That's why he's homeless. You know, he used to have a wife and he was like, well, carrots. And she was like, get the fuck out of here and you're fucking carrots. He was like, they're delicious. Um, or maybe he was panhandling, you know, and then a goody two shoes walked by and he was like, spare some change, it's for booze. And she was like, no, carrots for you. And he was like, oh, yummy, you know. And bleh, bleh. Um, <laughs> because he eats too fast, he has terrible manners. But um, it's just weird because like two weeks ago, if you'd been like, hey, Rebecca, what's in a hobo's throw up? Uh, I, I probably would have said like, I don't know, ramen noodles and pieces of newspaper, you know? Um, I don't think it would have been like garden fresh veggies. Delicious. So, um, Dating is funny, because we were talking about how I didn't want to date him. And I think I'm going to call this DVD Rebecca Kohler, A Failure at Segways. Uh, I'm okay with that. But um, dating, I was thinking about dating the other day. It's funny, because um, I was thinking about when you first start dating someone. And uh, it will come back to why I was thinking that. But um, I think it's funny when you first start dating someone that you, you don't, like try to be a different person, but you kind of try to put your best foot forward. And I'm not like a rocket scientist. I know we've all thought this before, but it's funny. I was thinking about one of the things that I say when I first start seeing someone, you know, to try to, you try to be like quirky and interesting and like deep, you know? And um, one of the things I say is I'll be like, oh, I love fishing. I just love, I love going to a cottage and just fishing. <laughs> You know, because fishing, it's one of the only times in life where I don't mind waiting for something. <laughs> but it's funny, because like six months later, a guy will be like, hey, do you want to go fishing this weekend? And I'll be like, what the fuck would I do that? You know, so it is kind of, like, fishing's okay, I guess, you know, but I don't really want to, like, go out of my way to do that. But... I was thinking about it because I was on the streetcar recently and um, I had like just, you know, sometimes you have a flash memory of, and I thought of a guy I dated like a year ago and then I had a flash vision of kissing him and I was like, <laughs> and I was like on the streetcar and people were like, are you having a seizure? Um, but no, like the memory of kissing that guy was like, Whoa. and And what's funny though is that I thought about when we first started seeing each other, I think that's also really like, you know when you first start going out with someone, you're so fucking attracted to them. Do you know what I mean? You're like, oh, you know, like, um, like they could have a thumb growing out of their forehead and you'd be like, I'll suck it, I'll suck it, I'll put it in my mouth. You know, like, you just want to like shrink them into a lozenge and put them in your mouth and go to work and be like, mm. You're so attracted to them. And then like cut to like a year later and you're on the streetcar and you're like, oh, oh, I can't believe I sucked that thumb. Oh, oh. <laughs> now remember guys, when you date, don't forget to use condoms. It's time we talked about STDs, oh. ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to talk about HPV. Who here knows what HPV is? They have it. Um, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's not your fault. No, it is okay because like 90% of people have HPV, right? So I've come up with this new theory about HPV that if you have HPV, it's actually just a sign that you're a functioning adult who has social skills and managed to have sex. The people that don't have HPV are fucking losers, okay? <laughs> that guy has it, too. So, um, this joke is just a trick to, like, get people to come out of their HPV shells. Um, no, but, uh, but you do want to use a condom. And uh, I actually read an interesting article about condoms the other day. I don't know if anyone else saw it. It was about China. They manufacture condoms. And um, they have faulty ones. Sometimes the condoms aren't working properly. And instead of throwing those condoms in the garbage where a broken condom ex uh, should uh, exist or go, um, they sell those uh, faulty condoms to Africa at a discounted rate. Yes, do you see? Do you see? Because that explained a lot to me, right? I was like, oh. That's why Africans, 
think that Chinese people are really bad at making condoms. <laughs> <laughs> they have that website, Tootsies Against Chinese Condom. There's so many places I could have gone with that joke. AIDS. So anyway, um, do you like how I didn't go there and then did and ruined everything? Okay. So, uh, but yeah, STDs are shitty and I kind of talked about HPV and then left it, but I'm gonna come back to it because uh, I, I just remembered, I saw an ad in a bathroom. I went into a bathroom stall at a bar. Um, sometimes I do that. And uh, to pee, it's the beer. <laughs> so um, I go into this bathroom stall and I close the door and there's one of those ads on the bathroom stall door, right? It's in your face. I hate those ads because you're trapped. You have, no, you have nowhere to look. Of course you're gonna look, because what am I gonna look? I like pizza. You know, make love, not war. Uh, this is not fascinating. So, uh, I mean, at least if you're a guy and you have one of those ads in front of the urinal, you know, you can look over, oh, that guy's a huge dick. You know, like, <laughs> you have entertainment, okay? We just have the walls. So, I'm looking at the ad, and it's for the HPV vaccine, which is, by the way, I think it's awesome that they have that vaccine, super, uh, but it was the, it was the slogan of, uh, of the HPV vaccine ad that really pissed me off, okay? And it, it, it read this way, it said, um, you can get HPV without even knowing it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> That's how you get it. <laughs> if you know you're gonna get it, you probably won't get it. I don't think anyone's out there like, getting the HPV. <laughs> or like the doctor's like, I'm really sorry, but I you have HPV. Yeah, I know, I got that on Saturday. <laughs> Just the most unimaginative, most unimaginative advertising aid. It's the most, that advertising agency has no imagination. <laughs> They're like, yeah, um, just, um, yeah, for that STD one, just state the obvious. L that'll sell it. I think they need something a little punchier, you know, like, HPV, you can get it in your asshole, you know? <laughs> you know, and then people will pay more attention to, because you can, you know. Never had it. Um, <laughs> So, uh, no, but they do have an HPV vaccine, and that is awesome. Uh, and uh, by the way, if, if some people in here are still like, what's HPV? Um, it's the human papillomavirus, and it causes warts and cancer. All right, next. So, uh, <laughs> no, but they have this vaccine, which is essentially a vaccine against cancer, which is amazing, right? But there are still a lot of like church groups and Republicans in the states who don't want the vaccine given to young girls because they're afraid that it will encourage young women to have premarital sex, right? And it's weird because normally I tend to disagree with that type of person, with like a Christian, <laughs> uh, or especially a Republican. But um, in this case, I kind of know where they're coming from. You know, it's weird because uh, when I was a kid, I remember my mother uh, took me to get a tetanus vaccine. And uh, it was weird, we got in the car and we drove there and they gave me the shot. And as soon as I had, I was like, oh my God, oh, I have an urge, you know? And um, <laughs> we were driving home and I was like, I'm gonna get out of this car! You know, my mom was like, hold on, man. And then um, we got home and I ran inside and I went into the basement and I found the rustiest nail <laughs> that I could find. And I just started jabbing my leg with it! <laughs> And so I think that that's what might happen with those young girls. <laughs> that they might start looking for a rusty nail of their own. <laughs> Cut that one from the DVD. Um, <laughs> so 
we've covered STDs. We're talking some stuff about condoms. I do have some great themes going on. Um, actually, let's step away for a second. I just thought of a fun one. Um, I recently stayed at a bed and breakfast and uh, they had this product on the back of the toilet. Uh, it looked like eye drops, but it wasn't. It was called One Drop. Is anyone here familiar with One Drop? Just that one stinky person. I'll explain. Uh, one Drop is a product that uh, you, you put one drop. It, wouldn't it be funny if it was called One Drop, but you put two drops? Um, so you put one drop in the toilet and it creates some kind of chemical barrier. And then when you take a poop, uh, there's no odor. Isn't that amazing? I think it's amazing. <laughs> Do you know how much anxiety this could have saved me in my dating life? <laughs> if I had a one drop with me at all times? I spent most of my dating life going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. oh really, I gotta go home. Um, <laughs> So I've decided, you know, I was like, I'm gonna take action. So I bought myself a one drop and I keep that in my purse. And now I can poo in my purse. <laughs> That's the funniest. Um, also, I did wanna talk about Google because um, it's amazing also. It's almost as amazing as one drop. Uh, Cause I don't know how much you guys think about Google. Uh, or life before it. Do you, like, I don't understand how I did anything, knew anything, got anywhere. Do you remember when people used to invite you over for a barbecue? And uh, you'd be like, yeah, sure, I'll come on Saturday. And they'd be like, oh, do you know how to get to my place? And you'd be like, oh, fuck. And, uh, or unless you love directions. Uh, but I'd always be like, oh no. And so they'd start telling, they'd be like, okay, it's easy. It's easy, right? You go uh, north up Waverly, okay? And then you turn right on McCormick, okay? Um, actually, but there's no street sign at McCormick. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go north on Waverly and then you're gonna turn right at the first Starbucks, okay? So there's two star, no, sorry, it's a second Starbucks. Okay, so wait. Yeah, you're gonna come north. From where you're coming, you're gonna come north. There's one Starbucks and two Starbucks. And you're to right at the second, sorry, they're not Starbucks, they're second cups. I get so confused. Okay, so you go north on Waverly, you go right at the second, second cup, okay? And then you're gonna go, you're gonna go west and then you're gonna come to a fork in the road and you're gonna go under a tunnel. And in the tunnel, you'll meet a troll. And the troll will ask you, through, you know, you're like, forget the barbecue, okay? Now your friends like, come for a barbecue, do to do, Google Maps, okay? It even gives you a detour around the troll. And uh, that's amazing, you know? The other day I Googled, what was life like before Google? My computer exploded. I don't, I no longer have a computer. Um, but no, it is. And the only problem with this is that I become too dependent on Google. I know I no longer understand how to solve my own problems or collect my own information, okay? And the other day I had this problem with my iPhone 4, which was a five, anyway. Um, I couldn't get the photos off my phone onto my computer. And it was really, str I had done it before and it wasn't working. I was like, what the hell? So, um, so when I get confused, I talk like this. So, um, um, so I was like, what the hell, Google? And I Googled, um, how do you get photos off the iPhone? And boom, there it was in the Google drop-down menu. And by the by, the Google drop-down menu is my favorite, the Google drop-down menu <laughs> is my favorite aspect of Google, okay? Because you can see what other people have Googled. That's fascinating, and I think it brings us together as a people. <laughs> I'm serious, because last week I Googled, why are some farts hot? <laughs> Guys, all I had to type was why are some F and then farts hot was an option. Okay. And that made me feel way less alone in my digestive issues. Because I don't know what's up with me. Sometimes I eat the wrong thing. It's like I could poach an egg in my pants, okay? Anyway, so. Oh, come, like you've never had a hot fart? Give me a fucking break. This is a taping, okay? I need some laughter. I need you to be honest with yourselves. <laughs> so, um, I think I scared you. <laughs> Just don't fart on us. Okay, so anyway, so I Googled, how do I get photos off the iPhone? And it brought me straight to a forum called, how do I get photos off the iPhone? But this was the first response. And this is what pissed me off, okay? Because when Google fails me, I get really mad. 
This is from a guy named Jay Hollington, and this is how we responded to, how do I get photos off the iPhone? The iPhone manual says that the photo should appear when you connect the iPhone to your computer. Not having an iPhone myself, I'm not sure how this works. Well then why did you answer the how do I get photos off my iPhone forum? This is the problem with the internet, I think, right? Because people who just want to talk and share their like indirect, they're like, I have indirect knowledge about that. I'm just gonna spew my mouth up. But nobody is there to be like, shut the fuck up, right? Because they're in the privacy of their own basement or whatever. Like, Arr. so, uh, <laughs> so G. Holland just is like, yeah, I'll answer this, you know? And like. It pisses me off. Like, I wonder, does he go to other forums and just shoot the shit? You know, like knitting.com. Someone's like, how do I do the pearl stitch? Jay Hollington. I hear it's an easy stitch. Not being a knitter myself. I'm not sure how to do it. But I have a sweater. Or like menstruation.com. Let's just pretend. Some girl's like, I'm 13. I just got my first period. I'm scared. Jay Hollington. I hear there will be blood. Not having a vagina myself. I'm not sure what you're going through, but I like vaginas very much. I have some candy. Uh, he's a made up guy. Well, no, he's real, but <coughs> the stories are made up. I hope he's not here. I think he's from Ajax. That would make sense, right? Better not sell this in Ajax. I was about to say, those people suck, right? <laughs> Delete that. Um, I think I've come up with a way to trap Jay Hollington. I'm gonna start my own forum and it's gonna be, uh, how can I be more of an irritating douchebag? And then Jay Hollington will be trolling the internet as he does. He'll stumble on my forum. Finally, a question I can answer. <laughs> so, uh, Guys, um, we were talking about uh, condoms, uh, HPV. Okay. Those are the fun times, right? I miss those days. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, the term family planning, okay? Uh, I don't understand this term. It doesn't make any sense to me. Do you know what they offer at a family planning clinic? Okay, they offer IUDs, diaphragms, abortions, uh, condoms, okay? Um, look, uh, I don't want to alarm you, but this doesn't sound like family planning <laughs> to me, okay? Because you don't go to like a party planner to find out how to not have a party. <laughs> you know, like you don't go to a party planner and like, hey, uh, ooh, I accidentally planned a party. <laughs> I'm gonna need to cancel that. <laughs> yeah, I know the party has a heartbeat, okay? But, it's me on the Artie Bay, all right? Um, no, I guess I don't wanna be a word nerd, okay? It just, it, I think it's family prevention, okay? I think, I think that's what's going on, okay? I do. Um, speaking of uh, abortions, that's toughy. Uh, I recently, uh, <laughs> I recently went to an abortion clinic and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't for me. It was for a friend and, uh, no, seriously. And, uh, no, really. I was there for moral support and, uh, and that's actually a really, that's a really heavy case of moral support, you know? Like, hey, come, come moral support for my soccer game. That's what I'm, come moral support for my abortion. Okay, like that's a, nobody ever gets that, but I say it every time and, uh, because it's heavy moral. Anyway, okay, so, uh, so anyway, I go to an abortion clinic with my friend because she needs to have an abortion and I go to support her and it's fucking weird. Weird, okay, like we get there and there's like security, you know, I don't know when's the last one were you there? Okay, no anyway, so um, So we get in there's security my friend is crying, you know And there was something about that place that really bothered me and I think it was all the baby killing. Okay, and uh, <laughs> <I'm> just kidding <laughs> That didn't bother me at all um, but, No <laughs> Whoa um, 
um, no, what bothered me is that um, as soon we walked in there, okay, and um, the first thing I saw, there was like a waiting room, and then there was a coffee table, and on the coffee table, there was a huge bowl of condoms, okay? And, um, and I know you think, oh, like an abortion clinic, sounds like a good place for condoms. I, I, you know, you would think so, but it's not, okay? Because there's something about those condoms in an abortion clinic. If, if that bull was a person who could talk, it would be a really irritating lady going, maybe you should have thought of this, huh? <laughs> okay? What are you gonna do with these now? You know, like, oh, a little coaster, thanks a lot. Like, no, because it's... <laughs> It's kind of like if you're like on your bike and you get hit by a car and you fall off and you have brain damage and you rush to the hospital and then beside your bed is like a big bowl of helmets, you know? Like, uh, you know like, and now you actually need a helmet, so that's different. But um, with the condoms, that's like, I just, it's not, I think what would be more useful is like a big bowl of dildos, um, you know, with a sign that said, these don't go. Um, <laughs> And the girls could like learn. I don't. It's just because the other the other thing with like it not being the right time for condoms. I don't care what your view on abortion is. Like you're pro it, against it. If you come to the clinic to have one, I'm sure that's a bad day for you. You know. So I don't think anyone's gonna be like, oh, thank you so much. Oh, awesome condoms for the next time I fuck a guy. Like, is that really what you're thinking? Is that like maybe you should go home, watch some Care Bears videos, and just chillax. <laughs> This is a weird show. It's good. It's good. It's weird. And uh, it's a taping, so it's like, I'm a little stressed, you know? And then you guys are like with me, but also like, I can't believe she said that. <laughs> and so it's like, I think it's gonna turn out good, but I, I'm a really good person. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, abortion, sex in general, is just crazy. It causes all of our problems, pretty much. Most of them, right? Am I right? Oh my God. Um, heartbreak, diseases, babies, okay? Sex, it's a killer. Um, I recently went into a sex store, uh, like, uh, you know, like what they sell thing. And it was nothing crazy. I was just buying some giant anal beads. Um, <laughs> because they wear down and... Uh, <laughs> get stuck in between them and you're like how am I gonna clean this a toothbrush you know and then I have to clean the toothbrush and uh, it's a make work project so when that happens to my beads I just throw them out and buy new ones um, they're about this big I'm just kidding uh, that's what I mean you ood at the poo come on it's Rebecca Kohler okay there's gonna be a poo and a bead okay so uh, so I didn't actually buy anal beads. I don't use them. I don't want to. I'll be upfront with you. I don't want to use those beads in my bum, okay? Uh, but I have a friend who's always trying to like sell them to me, you know, like not literally. She's not like, here, give me five dollars. Uh, but... <laughs> She's like, no, back. they're great. They're amazing, okay? What you do is you shove them up the poo hole, okay? And then when it feels good, you pull them out. What am I, a lamp? <laughs> Why don't you try turning me on the old-fashioned way with a gerbil? Um, <laughs> hey, Richard Gere. So, uh, do you remember when there was that rumor about Richard Gere? Oh, I have a gerbil in my bum. Oh, God, those were the days. But um, who would start that rumor? Julia Roberts, for sure, right? Anyway, so, but it is, it's just, I know you guys are a bit grossed out because I heard you ooing, um, and uh, go fuck yourselves. But, uh, no, here's my thing. So it's just what I, the reason I bring it up to discuss the poo beads is because I find it fascinating um, that there are different types of people who will put uh, beads in their bum or, uh, or a gerbil or whatever. Like, this is fascinating to me, right? Like, um, like the, because I have mice in my apartment, okay? And the other day I was doing dishes and uh, I was like, pretty woman, you know, whatever. And then, um, no, and then I saw a mouse and I was like, ah! And then I ran into another room and I didn't go back into the kitchen for like an hour because I was afraid the mouse would be hanging out there like smoking a cigarette, you know. <laughs> hey, baby, you know, whatever. And um, so I was not into having sex with the mouse. Um, <laughs> whereas someone like Richard Gere or whoever is like, he's doing the pretty woman. And then, oh, hey, little guy, you know, what are you doing tonight? And then um, he like somehow attracts that mouse with a cheese underpant or something. I don't, <laughs> that is fascinating to me. I've already worn you out. 
<laughs> You're so tired. <laughs> You're so tired, guys. Um, I guess uh, we could get straight to genitals. Uh, <laughs> great. So uh, what I really wanted to do was talk a lot about balls. Um, but it's not fair to just talk about balls if I'm not gonna also talk about this. <laughs> My vagina. God, you're so boring. Um, <laughs> no, you're great. Um, so, no, and I know, I know you, I, I'm, I'm being, I'm abusing you, but I actually really like you and I know that you like me. We just have some like differences in like how far we should go or whatever, but I'll just continue. So, um, so anyway, no, I wanted to talk a lot about balls. Um, but yeah, first I will talk about vagina because I say some, not mean things about balls, but I express some like neuroses I have about them. And then I realized like once I was telling this joke, I was like, I was like, balls are crazy. And then I was like, wait a sec, so is this. So, um, so that's why I wanted to talk because I have a vagina. I do, and um, <laughs> but I like to stay as far away from it as possible. I don't, I don't really understand. It's, uh, there's flaps and stuff, and then um, <laughs> and it's just interesting to me. Like, I mean, uh, especially if you're gonna talk about like men and women, like this thing. It's just like, um, like when girls say that stupid thing when they're like, "I'm sick of men. I'm gonna become a lesbian." I'm like, oh, "Are you sure?" Um, <laughs> I mean, first of all, women are just f almost fucking worse than men. Like, I wouldn't want to date me. But number two, like, whoa, you have to lick a vagina, right? So, and, and that's, I'm so glad some people lick vaginas because that's the way the world go around. Um, but I don't want to, right? And um, does, does this sound? Do you guys all lick them? No, it's just, it's funny to me, basically, that men, especially, will be like, I'll be like, hey, will you come to the store with me? I need to buy some pillows. And they'll be like, oh, fuck you! I'm like, do you want to eat this? They're like, uh -huh. It's just a weird... That's a weird thing to me, because it's the last thing I would want to do. But they'd rather do it than buy pillows. And so... But then that's why you can't ever be fully mad at them, too. <laughs> Because we're like, well, they do that, so. But then the other weird thing is that I know that like half the world uh, enjoys to do it, and so that's a strange thing. Anyway, let's move on to, I think I, think I made a hash out of vaginas. Um, let's, uh, really, I was just trying to be politically correct and make fun of those two. I think they're great. But let's talk about balls now. Uh, so no, the reason I bring up balls is like, uh, like I said, I'm in my mid to late 2030s, and um, I'm not a slut by any means. But I've dealt with enough balls that you would think, oh, she knows what to do with balls, right? And uh, it's not true. Uh, no, I was having a conversation with a guy friend recently and we were exchanging sex tips. And I was like, cut your fingernails. And, um, and he was like, uh, get the balls involved. Okay, whatever you do, make sure to get the balls involved. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's cool. I can get that. Yeah, I'll get the balls involved. Thanks, John, you know? And then uh, I was walking home. I was like, yeah, I'll get those balls. And then I realized... <laughs> I realized I, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I should have been like, how, right? Because the problem is, and like I said, like I've dealt with balls, but the problem is when the balls come out, it, it's not practice time. You know, it's go time. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't have balls, so I can't go home and be like, oh, okay. And so, and when his pants come off, I can't be like, okay, just give me two sacks, okay? Because I'm just, I'm like a little confused. What? What's your erection? No, no, no. Okay, so, um, so, oh, that's interesting. Oh, let me just get my glasses. Okay. Oh. So if I lift one, the other one stays down. It's like one of those mattresses you see on TV. I'll just put this on that one. What's wrong? Um, no, when the balls come out, it's like, uh, like, right? It's like, or whatever you're supposed to do. I, but here's the, like, I'm kind of afraid of the balls. Like I have a brother and I used to kick him in the balls. He'd be like, oh! So, um, I have a fear, like, usually I just do, like, the David Bowie from Labyrinth move, you know, I'm like... <laughs> but then I'm like, what if I do a 
it too hard, you know? Like, oh, you know, I'll cup them. I'll just cup his balls. And what if he's like, oh? And I'm like, oh, he likes that. He likes that. When I cup them, he's like, no! Get out of my house! Can you imagine? So awkward. I can't even get a grasp on the texture of those things. Are they hard? Soft. Could we get an answer? It's like a walnut and a prune had a baby. And they were like, oh, it's balls. There's always like four weird hairs growing out of the balls. You know those hairs? And they're like, they're like straight and jagged at the same time because they've been crammed in your pants all day. You're like, oh, I'm a banker. And then you're like, suck this. You know, and... Maybe they could just wax those hairs, but then the skin is so weird. It's like silly putty. I don't think it would work. You know what I mean? They'd just be like, yeah, we'll just. Push. Oh, are you okay? Shit. Okay, that's just. Uh, that's just stretched out. Okay, we'll just pull a little harder. Um, okay, I'm gonna pull. You pull me. Okay, and then we'll just. Push. Oh my god. Okay, now it's just like a pizza dough with two pink olives on the edge. <laughs> Ow! Um, so those hairs are there. I know you're supposed to put them in your mouth, right? You're supposed to, you're the, that's some sexy thing you see in like porn or whatever. And um, I can't do this, it's ne it never works out. And that's the other thing, because there's pressure to be sexy when you're dealing, you're like, oh, let me just get down here. And, oh, 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 oh. Do you have a shoehorn? You know, like it's just. It's not like in the movies. Sometimes they do fit and that's just as awkward. You're like, oh, oh okay, yeah. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah, they don't usually slide in for you. Oh my God, oh. Elmo. <laughs> and they're like the old man part of the guy too. No matter how old the guy is, Okay, like I could, I, I could pull a cougar night. I could, um, I could bring an 18 year old home, you know? And I'd take off his clothes. Oh my God, you're so smooth, you're so taut, you know? Like, ah, 82, you know, like. And the balls are all like, hello, madam. Pass me my walking stick. Oh, here it is. Um, seriously, it's like they time traveled without him, you know? There's like a DeLorean parked on his thigh. And balls move by themselves. I don't know if you've ever witnessed that. Sometimes you'll be having sex with a man. Like that. And, um... Actually... Really quick, I just wanted to tell men something. Um, when you're having sex, uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is a, a blanket statement compliment. And sometimes you're having sex with a man. A lot of men say this. All different, like nerds, jocks, the whole gamut. They all say this. <clears throat> oh, your pussy feels so good. Now, I hate that compliment, okay? First of all, the word pussy gives me the creeps, okay? I don't have a cat in my pants. <laughs> um, but mostly it's a blanket. Like, oh, it's a pussy. Like, what do you, like, oh, your pussy feels, I'm sure it does. It's a vagina. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure you say that to all the girls. Like, I want something specific to me. You know, like, oh, I like that you play Facebook Scrabble. You know, like something like... <laughs> your pussy feel... Like, when's the last time you put your penis in a vagina and you were like, ow, what the fuck, you broken glass in there? <laughs> I'm sure they're all pretty good. <laughs> I told that joke once. <laughs> This old man came up to me. He was like 65, he wasn't that old. And, uh, and he was like, uh, about your balls joke. And I was like, oh, great. Um, or no, sorry, about your, about your pussy joke. Uh, and I was like, this is gonna be creepy. Uh, and he was like, um, all vaginas feel good, but some feel better than others. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well maybe that's even okay. You know, maybe I'd like to hear like, Oh, your pussy feels better than others. <laughs> that would make me feel special. That little bit of detail. Anyway, back to the balls. Balls move 
by themselves, okay? I don't know, so sometimes you're having sex with a man, this is what reminded me of this movement, always reminds me of vaginas and sex, I wonder why. And so, um, so anyway, sometimes you're having sex with a man and you think, oh, I think I'm gonna have an orgasm. <clears throat> And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> so you're like, uh, uh, uh. so sometimes you're having sex with a man, and you think, oh, I'm gonna have an orgasm. And then um, the guy will be like, Ugh. and you're like, oh, that's cool, that's fine, I'll just go do some dishes. And then um, you just smash them, and then uh, you come back, because I don't know if you know, but if you're about to have an orgasm and then you don't, it's kind of like you just had two espressos. So uh, you're mad. Anyway, so. I'll watch his balls. <laughs> and then you watch them. And the cool thing is that he's sleeping, but the balls are still processing what just happened. I think they have like administrative work to do or something. You know, they're like, we just lost 10,000 men. And then they have to like rehire. Because the ball, like they were like, oh. They look like E.T. when they found him in the ditch. Do you remember that scene? That's what balls look like after sex. They're all drained and tired. Anyway, I guess what I'm saying about balls, I just, I don't, I'm afraid of them. And the weird thing is that like, but I'm not like a man hater. Like I like a penis and if I like a man, I want to touch his penis. You know, that's great. I'm excited about the penis, you know? And, and I, I think like, oh, we'll go home. He'll take off his pants, he'll see his penis, everything will be fine, you know? And then, uh, because the penis is straightforward, you know, it's like up and down, you know, it's a penis that penetrates, you know, I'm gonna put this places, you know, like, um, it's like a bullet covered in skin, coming to shoot me! <laughs> I wanna get shot! Okay, so, um, so I get that thing, but it's never, it's never so smooth. Like, you get there, you're making out, you take off his pants, you see the penis, you're like, hey, penis. The penis is like, hey, um, I hope it's cool. I brought my two retarded brothers. <laughs> Guys, I've been Rebecca Kohler. 